an old black and white TV set. I can't have new ones because they make me ill. The cover on this chair is not for the dog, it's for me. We can't have real flowers in the house because of Debbie. So for my birthday, my husband bought me these artificial flowers. Debbie Jordan is a prisoner in her own home. She's allergic to many of the chemicals that make up the world outside. I get headaches, chest pains, stomach ache, um, my right arm goes numb, I can drop things. Debbie's problems start with complex chemical reactions. Reactions between the cells of her body and the materials around her. This is my wardrobe. It's all natural fibres that don't make me ill. And up there is all the stuff that makes me ill that we can't have down here. Both natural and artificial materials share the same basic ingredients. They're made from chemical elements or compounds, groups of elements bonded together. This is a model of the periodic table. The most chemically reactive elements are shown the tallest. Doctors are trying to find out why some people are allergic to materials that most of us find harmless. It's a long-term scientific investigation. Airedale, Cumbria. For the next three weeks, Debbie won't step outside this building. Saturday the 29th of March. We arrived at the hospital at half past two. Inside the car, oil vapour, plastics and the material of the seats have set off Debbie's allergies. But this trip could well be worth the trouble. Debbie's hoping her stay at the Airedale Centre will change her life. Doctors here are trying to get to the bottom of what allergy is and how people affected can cope with it. I felt really tired and my stomach hurt on the journey. Must be Debbie Jordan. Yeah. And Mrs. Jordan? Yeah. All right. Before uh, we take Debbie into the unit, we'll need to get you both to put a pair of gowns on and right. then I can show you around into Debbie's room. Mm -hmm. Okay? My head's been spinning all day. We had to wear these horrible white cotton gowns. This is just so that you don't take any dust and dirt particles into the unit. The Airedale Centre is run by Dr. Jonathan Maberly. The allergy is very common and becoming more common every day. It's the immune system protecting the body against something that it recognises as being foreign and dangerous, which it shouldn't. It should recognise as being harmless. After I unpacked, I had to shower and change my clothes. We were then taken on a tour of the place, although it's not all that big. Okay, so you want to unpack your bits and pieces, as I say, I'll come back. We can go through some of the information in the information pack here for you. And I'll see you in a moment. Okay. Airedale is a completely controlled environment. The air is filtered to remove pollens, dusts and moulds and chemicals. And we have strict rules about the sorts of things that are allowed in and rules about what the building's constructed of. So inside, the environment should be completely free of things which can set off an allergic response. And that means when a patient's admitted, if their symptoms are due to allergy or sensitivity, they must get better. So that's the first thing that we're looking for. Even the building is part of a controlled scientific experiment. It's a sealed box, and everything coming in gets filtered and cleaned. The idea is to eliminate anything that might cause an allergic reaction. OK, Debbie, we just need to check your height and see what your weight is at the beginning. Doctors understand that everyone who comes here genuinely feels ill. But are they physically ill or is it something in their minds? OK, that's fine. The only way to find out is through a controlled okay, investigation. When Debbie first came into the unit, we took baseline measurements of various observations like pulse, blood pressure, weight, 
temperature and peak flow to measure her lung function. This is the peak flow meter. I want you to blow into it, but it's not a blow with your cheeks out like It's a huff, like as hard and as fast as you can, OK? These measurements are then compared with the measurements that we get after certain tests to see whether or not Debbie's reacting to things. So, have another go. They call the tests here challenges, a challenge to the body to see if it reacts. In a week's time, they'll start feeding Debbie one food at a time and injecting her with chemicals that might trigger her allergies. Doctors will need to control which variables they're changing so first, Debbie must get rid of anything that could confuse the results. It means eating nothing for a week. Sunday the 30th of March. My headache had gone when I woke up this morning. My mum said that my eyes weren't red. My ears are still sore though. The water here was making my chest hurt, so we tried a different one and that made me feel dizzy. My headache returned and my heart was racing. But the water is part of the experiment. Debbie knows the doctors have taken a sample from the tap in her mum's kitchen to see if that's what's causing the allergies. And she knows that some of the time she's being given water from the filtered supply at Airedale. But she doesn't know which water is which. For now, only the doctors know that. So Debbie's mind can't influence the results. At last, food. Debbie gets one food at a time. And if it has a strong smell, she has to eat it in a special booth fitted with an extractor fan, so the smell doesn't affect other patients. Thursday the 17th of April. Last night I really wanted to be home. I wanted to be with my mum, my dad, my friends, my bed and my things. And my arm hurts because of all the injections. In all, Debbie will have more than 100 injections during her time at Airedale. From vegetable essence to perfume, these bottles hold a nightmare for every allergic patient. But there's only one way to find out which will upset Debbie. Because it's a scientific process, you must use controls. So the challenges are done blind, that is, the patient doesn't know what they're being challenged with. And we use placebos in amongst the tests, so they don't know whether they're being tested with a real substance or a placebo. A placebo is something that looks like the real thing and feels like the real thing, but isn't. It's important that Debbie doesn't know whether this injection is a real one or not. In fact, it's harmless sterile water. It's a control to test whether being injected in itself can cause Debbie to feel as if she's having an allergic reaction. Nice to you with us. How are you feeling? Ten minutes later, it's no surprise that Debbie's got a wheel on her arm where the injection went in. But how big is it? An allergic reaction will make the wheel get bigger. With careful records of the reactions to many different substances, a picture starts to emerge. To run through an alphabetical order, just to remind you. Almond, apple, banana, string bean, beef, cabbage mix, carrot, cashews, honey, cheese, chicken. Debbie was fairly typical of the sort of patients we see. If you end up in a clinic like this, then the chances are you will be sensitive to quite a wide range of substances. And we found Debbie to be allergic to a large number of foods and some of the inhaled particles and some of the chemicals as well. Cheese, chicken, corn, that's sweet corn, or, ma or maize. You sorted out my diet today. Egg white, egg I can't white, wait to get bread, home. I'll be able to go wine, outside, milk, see my friends, and I won't be shut up all day. Milk. But I think you ought to have, seriously, I consider drying the bedroom up that you've got by dehumidifiers or, or redecorating or whatever, or move to another bedroom, mm. which is drier, because you'd be a lot better off there. And think about getting rid of the fish. At last, all the testing is over and Debbie can get on with her life. Friday the 18th of April. 
I'm home and I feel fine. Debbie's found out much more precisely what chemicals her body reacts to. The element chlorine is one of them. These are some of the changes that we've had to make in the kitchen. In here is the water filter. Chlorine is often added to water supplies to kill bacteria. Also, we now have to use washing up liquid, specially fragrance-free for sensitive skin. I'm not allowed to use any chemical cleaners, uh, anything that's got smell, fragrance to it. So I'm only allowed to clean with borax. Borax is a chemical compound of sodium, boron and oxygen. But unlike many cleaning agents such as bleach, it doesn't contain chlorine. Flying in from the left of the periodic table, Chlorine is on the right-hand side, in Group 7. In terms of reactivity, Group 7 towers over most others. In fact, fluorine, chlorine's sister, is the most reactive element of all. Moving down the group, chlorine comes a close second. Chlorine is so reactive, it's never found on its own in nature. It's always bonded to other elements. Before chemists can investigate its properties, they must release it from those bonds in the laboratory using a chemical reagent. The potassium manganate 7 in this flask contains no chlorine. But when it meets hydrochloric acid, a chemical reaction will release the chlorine that makes up the acid. The gas bubbles out and collects in a jar. Like this, as an element, chlorine is very poisonous. Yet we eat a compound of chlorine every day. On the right-hand side of the periodic table, group seven elements stand tall because they're so reactive. But on the other side, group one are very reactive too. There are six of them, and they all share similar properties. In their pure form, they're soft, shiny metals. But like chlorine, they're never found pure in nature because they're so reactive. And once they have bonded with another element, the compound formed is nothing like a soft metal. In the laboratory, all the Group 1 metals must be stored covered in oil, so that gases in the air can't reach and react with them. This is sodium, so soft it can be cut with a knife. In seconds, the surface will begin to go gray as it reacts with oxygen in the air. But a vigorous reaction needs extra energy to get going. Heating the sodium up gives its atoms that extra energy and primes them for a reaction with chlorine. This reaction is a little chemical miracle. It turns two poisonous chemical elements into a vital cookery ingredient, sodium chloride, common salt. Zooming in, this is a chlorine atom squashed flat. With only seven electrons in its outer shell, chlorine atoms are looking for one more electron to become stable. They're not fussy they'll take it from any atom with an electron to spare. Sodium atoms make a natural partner because in amongst the cloud of electrons surrounding their nucleus, there's one electron sitting all on its own in the outer shell. The sodium atom is only too happy to pass that electron over to the chlorine, leaving the sodium with a positive electric charge, so it becomes a positive sodium ion. Meanwhile, the chlorine becomes a negative ion, and the scene is set for a chemical wedding. Because the bond between sodium and chlorine depends on them being ions, it's called ionic bonding. In practice, pairs of ions like this rarely exist on their own. When they gather together, they arrange themselves so positive ions are packed as closely as possible to the negative ions, 
and that's what gives salt crystals their regular shape. I am allergic to dogs too, but we couldn't get rid of Sherry. What we do do is we limit her movements to the one end of the house so she doesn't come to the bedroom end or anything. And we give her a bath every so often. All living things depend on chemical reactions. But most of the chemistry of life doesn't depend on ionic bonding. In fact, it all centers on the special chemistry of one element. In everyday life, we meet it most often as charcoal. This is carbon. Metals dominate the periodic table. When metals bond with non-metals, they usually form ionic bonds. But when non-metals bond with themselves or each other, they do it in a different way. It's called covalent bonding. Carbon is the king of covalent bonding. Look at a single carbon atom and there are six electrons orbiting the nucleus. This means that only half the outer shell is filled. Carbon is some way off achieving stability. It needs four electrons from somewhere. But if a group of carbon atoms get together, they can share the electrons in their outer shells. That's covalent bonding. It means each atom feels as if it has a complete outer shell. But it doesn't just work for carbon bonding with other carbon atoms. Hydrogen will also bond covalently with carbon. Four hydrogen atoms and a carbon atom make one molecule of methane, natural gas. Now Debbie knows what triggers her allergies. Everything seems a whole lot better. Before I went in to Airedale, I was in terrible pain due to the allergies and afterwards the pain did reduce. Hello. Hi. How's the okay. Chemistry can't explain exactly why Debbie's allergic, but a scientific investigation took the guesswork out of choosing what to eat and what to avoid. They told me how to control it. So now it's up to me if I want to stick to those rules. I want to be well, I want to have a normal life. And if I stick to what Airedale has told me, then I will be right, eventually. <laughs> <laughs>